Hey, welcome back to Mrs. Wizard's Way. And I know it's it's not a best video. It's not a review on my BMW or any other car. After Labor Day weekend, kind of throw things off in the shop. Those short weeks are the hardest week. And so I've got six really good stories from the classroom. I think you're gonna like these. Let's get started. You can raise remember, I have 26 years experience in the classroom and most of the time, everything was great. The kids were great. Everything was going smooth. I taught an art class. It wasn't like I was trying to teach them the Pythagorean theorem and how to do complex mathematical equations. No, there's a lot of art and creativity. And I had a lot of chance to get to know the kids, but there were some shiners out there. And one that I can think of was a kiddo that came in during lunch and I'll call him Jimmy. All the names, by the way, are made up. I've, I've changed their names so nobody will know who they are. But Jimmy came in at lunch and there was a girl in his, in his computer. This is where he worked. This is where he worked. And, you know, if you think about it, do you have a certain spot that you like to sit? Maybe you at church, this is your row. Or if you're in a certain spot, you know, this is where I sit if I go to this park or this restaurant. Well, this girl, Sally, was in his chair and he's starting to get a little agitated and i'm like oh crap now this girl was just seriously tough she kind of could play the part of like lita ford and kat von d she was a hard rocker girl and she could have ripped his face off if she if he had pushed her to move I'm like, oh, good grief, I don't need this. I'm like, uh, Jimmy, uh, you got a few more minutes before class starts. Uh, maybe you want to head to the bathroom before class starts? Oh, okay, off he went. But I'm just thinking, you don't mess with Sally. <laughs> she would have ripped his face off. And I loved her. I loved her to death. I loved both those kids. They were both great. But that was an interaction. It's like, mm, I got to defuse that one because uh, she'll kill you. <laughs> now, I taught all sorts of classes all sorts of art classes, anywhere from intro to art, just a basic get to know your art class, all the way up from photography to video production to graphic design to 3D modeling. But this kiddo, I'll call him Terry, he was started off in that intro to art class and he did okay as a freshman. I had to watch him a little bit because I had all sorts of kiddos and one, this kiddo was on that autism spectrum, which, I've had lots of kids in different capacities and we've done very well. But this kiddo really struggled with the interactions with people. And so we did okay in that intro to art class because there wasn't much, you know, interacting with people. It's all pretty much you do, here's the task, you do the assignment, here's the next task, you do the assignment. Not working with people. So they thought, oh, well, he really likes computers now. Let's put him in the video class. A video class requires you to work work with people. You have to play well with others. And Terry did not play well with others. He was very overbearing. He It was his way or the highway. You know, I'd, I'd assign groups. I didn't let them always choose because I'd always just choose their friends. And it's like, hey, we're trying to, you know, make you learn new people and work with different groups, part of that learning experience. And so I assigned him to different groups and the kids would just look at me like, Oh, Miss Long, please, no, not Terry. And I'm like, I'd pull him aside. Like, guys, I know, I, I'm, I know what you're going to be experiencing. I'll help you with what we can, but I know he's part of the class. We're going to, he's going to do his part. And we would talk to him and he was doing okay. Well, toward the end of the semester, he wasn't doing his part. He was getting very difficult to work with. And his grades started to slip and slip and slip. Now he wasn't failing, he had a D. So he was passing the class. And this is not a required course, it's an elective class. And after everything is said and done, the semester is over. I'm actually on the way to the lake when the wizard and I had that, our boat on Grand Lake in Oklahoma. We're on our way, this is like the, the first day of summer, we're like, we're getting out of town. Terry's mom emails me and emails principal and a couple other people as well and i'm like what am i supposed to do this kid hasn't been working hasn't been performing hasn't been doing the tasks he's been given he doesn't always get to choose the one task he wants to do he has to do the other roles i mean there's there's filming there's editing there's finding you know copyright issues with maybe finding music writing a script there's a whole lot of other parts you can't just do the one job he wanted to do and so 
that went back and forth and you know what nothing got changed because you know what it was the first day of summer and I was off the clock I was done it was done he had she he had that grade that D for weeks but the mom only was concerned until it was the very end and we left a mark we could mark what they were so you could an A would equal excellent a B would equal good a C would equal okay D was poor and she was upset that he had a poor marking on his grade card on an elective class yeah that was the last time I had him in my class after that so um, I, I did not sabotage him at all I, I tried for him to be successful but yeah that was not a good one the next one was at the very first high school I taught at it was an alternative school which meant kids got there for various different reasons maybe they got kicked out for fighting maybe they got in trouble with the law maybe they got had a drug possession that was a very common one sometimes girls would become pregnant and needed a setting that could be a little more flexible sometimes the kids just couldn't cut it at a traditional school and they needed this alternative setting for maybe they got behind in credits whatever but again i was teaching art there and i had this one kiddo and he was weird he was very odd I was like okay well i can work with weird i can work with odd okay i'm used to that. i'm an art person and you know if you haven't you remember back to your high school days the art kids were kind of weird and i'm okay with that but this kiddo was extra weird and i and he was just creepy i was just like okay what's going on well then one day he looks at me from across the table. We were sitting at like a big table and he was on one side, I was on the other side, kind of like the mom and dad at the dining table, okay? And he looks over at me straight in the face and says, are you afraid of me? Of course I am thinking, oh yeah, I'm afraid of you. You're a freaking weirdo. You're, you're creepy as hell. I'm like, no, not at all. He wasn't there much longer. Unfortunately, being that it was an alternative school didn't mean kids always stayed in the school. They sometimes left and he didn't make it very long. It wasn't because of him. I, I wasn't afraid of him or something, but that was a definitely creepy. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, I'm not afraid. The next one was because I was a computer teacher. That's mostly what I taught on. Unless I was teaching that intro to art class with traditional art supplies, everything else was done with, with the computer of some way, some capacity, either with graphic design or the photography. And I had this little guy. He was like a little hacker is what I'm going to call him. Well, the little hacker was not so bright to what was happening because as a you know, the teacher of a computer lab, I had software that I could see what were they doing on their computer screens. Not that I was trying to be the big sister and, and, you know, spy on them, but it was just a candy of every now and again, hey, I could turn on all the computers at one time. Oh, it's the end of the day. I can turn off all the computers at one time. I don't have to go to each and every computer and turn it off or on. That was handy. Another thing is if a kiddo had a problem, I could say, hey, they're like, hey, what's wrong? And I could just look at their screen sometimes and say, hey, this is what you need to do. It wasn't that I wasn't walking around. Some people thought that, and some teachers did use it that way, but I just used it occasionally like that. But I noticed the kid was being a little weird, a little secretive, kind of looking around all the time. I'm like, okay, what's he up to? And of course, if I walk over there, he's gonna put away whatever he's doing. So, okay, I'm not gonna see that. And it never let the kids know if I was looking at their screen. And they knew, and this is not a secret, they knew I could do this. And also I could put my screen to their screen so they could see what I was doing on my computer if when I gave them permission. So if I was demoing something, it was handy. So they knew this existed. It wasn't like it was hush hush. They didn't know. So I look on his computer screen. I'm like, what's he up to? Well, he's put some files on his desktop, on his C hard drive. I'm like, okay, what's, what's he doing? And I can see there's some scripts there. There's some EXE files. I'm like, okay, you're up to no good. I take a couple of screenshots to record it and being that it's on a network i can remotely access that hard drive so i remotely access his hard drive and made a copy of what he was working on i have all those files he had saved thinking he was being so secret his little hackerness yeah i gave that to the it department he got banned from the computers lo and behold there's like what were you thinking dude you can't do this on the network and now how are you going to pass my class when you can't get on the computers so just like most hackers, anyone who breaks the law has to learn the hard way. And the ones that aren't good at it really fail. And obviously he wasn't very successful in his hacking. The next one is I feel bad. This was one that I was like, oh my gosh, I, I failed in what I was doing. And I feel guilty for this one. I was sharing a classroom some with a debate teacher. And we really didn't have a very strong debate program at our school. And so 
I was like, he, so he only taught in there one hour a day because he needed the computers and I was on my planning period, he used the lab. So, you know, I shared the space and you know, he was new to the building and I was kind of helping him, got him showing him the ropes and everything. Well, it came to be time to do conferences parent-teacher conferences. And I met in the back. He met over on this other side of the room. It was a rather large room. I, I didn't think anything of it. He was talking to a parent. They were quietly just chatting back and forth and back and forth. Okay, nothing big. I was like, okay, it must be fine. And then she leaves. And he, he comes over and he's like, that was terrible. I'm like, what happened? It's in, I didn't hear, nobody was raised voices. No, nothing was overly animated. He, she was attacking him. She swore that her child was going to be the next, you know, debate god, I guess. And was going to go to college on debate scholarships and get all, you know, become the best debater in the world. Except we didn't have a great program and we weren't excellent in what, you know, competitions we did go to. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, she was just attacking me. And I felt bad because I was like, man, I should have gone over there. I didn't know. He could have, maybe I should have said, hey, if you have problems, give me a signal. We can make sure the principals will come in. But we're really even, you know, the, the audacity of this lady attacking him was just ridiculous. He's this first year teacher in our building. He hadn't been teaching but a couple of years. He was in a wheelchair because he had a disability. It, it was physical disability, not mental in any capacity. He was an incredibly bright gentleman. I was shocked. I was like, lady, what the heck are you doing? Your child is not exceptional. You just think they're, well, I guess her, her name should be called Karen. It was, it was sad. I felt really bad for him because he was doing everything he, would, he could. He was doing great. He was working way beyond what he had to from any other prep he taught. But this, teach, this lady was really cruddy. The last one I have is an exchange student. I'm pretty sure she was from Germany. I'm gonna call her Anna. And she lived with the host family that, I think they wanted to substitute her family to, be, that, to become, her, their, become the new family. And they really limited what she did, what, who she talked to, like not just her friends, but they didn't want her talking to the people back home. And I could see she wasn't happy. She was struggling a lot because she was homesick and she couldn't you know, rely on talking to you know, people back home or friends or family. And so I'm, I was like, okay, this, this sounds stupid. Um, this is a 17 year old child. This is not like we're three where we need to limit who and what they do. And we had a class once a week. And it was like a seminar style class where you would, you know, work on a big, you know, culminating project from your high school experience. Well, she's only there for a year, so she didn't have one of these projects to do. And I was like, you know, instead of working on that, why don't you communicate with the people back home? Because it's like a seven, eight hour difference from Central America time zone to the time where she was at. And I was like, you know what, if this class is at, you know, 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, it's gonna be a reasonable time that you can talk to people at home, not have to wait till the end of the day when it's like you know midnight or two in the morning. She was really happy. She got happier after that, and that was a much better experience for her overall, just being able to chit chat with her people back you know, home. I don't think she stayed with that family very long. I think she moved. I don't think it was healthy. Um, it, you, you can't do that. As a host family, you're, you're supposed to become the new guides not take over and replace. So that was sad. So those are six of the stories I have had in my teaching experience. I've got tons more. I haven't even touched on the topic of why I quit teaching, but that is what I have. Six stories that were just, I can't forget. I'll never forget. I'll be telling my grandkids about these in the far, 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 far future. Anyway, glad you're watching today. If you hadn't hit that subscribe button, I'd love for you to do that. And hopefully next week, I've got videos planned for the, for the bus and for the BMW, but it just didn't work out this week to get those finished. So hope you subscribe. See you later.